Hi guys, my name's Ben Guilford, I'm the owner of The Firebrick Company, and in this video, we're gonna take you through the third part of how to build the dome of your pre-cut brick oven kit. Uh, right, we're now gonna lay the entry arch, uh, which is one of my favorite parts of this build. Uh, it's really good fun. First thing we do with all of the arches that we lay, including the one at the front, is you dry lay it first, just to make sure that you have enough room to lay it, um, that for one reason or another, you haven't, maybe if you've raised these bricks up too high, you will actually find that if, if these bricks aren't lined up here and here, you may find that you don't have a gap in the middle here, that you, you've run out of room. To fix that, of course, you just raise this formwork slightly using some packets. But we've got our uh, bricks uh, dry stacked on here, and I can see I've got a good, let's say 16 mil gap in the middle. Uh, so I can put in a gap, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine gaps, and maybe, maybe nearly 18 mil to play with. So technically I could have a two millimeter joint at the bottom of each of these bricks and I would end up with a nice two mil joint in the middle here, okay? So I'm gonna lay these quite tight. I'm not gonna try to aim for two mil. I'm actually gonna aim to get them as tight as I can. Uh, and then if I do end up with a slightly larger gap in the middle, I'm just gonna fill it in with our refractory mix. We want to have the center of the brick resting on the formwork rather than one end or the other. And then we'll get a nice uniform curve. So you can see here that this joint is quite thin. Uh, and so if I get my just mix and put it on nice and thick, I'm gonna have a real interesting time trying to get that into position. So rather try to mimic the amount of mortar that's going to be on there. Maybe I'll probably put on a little bit much, but that means I can squeeze a little bit out. But if I make it really thick, then it just makes it that little bit harder to get the brick into place. Laying the entry arch and the vent arch uh, is one of the processes where you have to finish it once you start it. Uh, so I can't just stop now uh, and let it set and come back and, and put the last few bricks in later on, tomorrow or something like that. I really need to finish it all now so that it all sets together. Uh, because otherwise I run the risk when I come back, let's say I've done half of it, I come back to lay the rest, I might bump these bricks and that would dislodge them because they're not particularly strong sitting on this, this formwork. Uh, so we really want to lay them all together so they can all set together and form a really strong arch. Get to the end of this particular row and this, this affects all of the pre-cut brick oven kits they all have this feature when you start laying the row that's going to go over this arch you're going to find that you get quite a strange shaped joint in between the underside of the brick uh, and and this the, the back of the entry arch uh, and you're just going to fill that in with the mortar if you really want to get fancy hey cut a brick go crazy, uh, try and cut a piece of brick to fit that, but you're never ever going to see that brick. Uh, and again, this refractory mixture is incredible. It's more than capable of filling that gap for you. Okay, so what we're gonna be doing is just trailing in some more of this mix into that joint and just filling that up. 
and we can smooth off that inside face. Uh, if, you're, if you're finding maybe you're in a cold area and the mix is slumping more than you like, it's actually moving on you, you can get uh, a piece of cardboard and just put it on the inside face and just put a stick against it just to prop it up in place to stop all this, this material from you know, falling in. Once your entry arch has been set for 12 hours, you can remove the formwork, uh, and then that, that's going to allow you access into the dome to clean up all the brickwork, to do any pointing, particularly around this area. Uh, so do make sure you give it that 12 hours to set before you remove the formwork. Uh, the process of removing it is fairly straightforward. We're going to pull out these plastic strips, uh, and then the whole formwork should then be able to drop down by the depth of these strips, which will free it up to slide out. Now, you may find that this formwork might get stuck in there. Maybe it's taken you a while to get to this point and the, the refractory mortar mix that you've used to put the bricks together has bonded you know, to that formwork and just won't let it out. Don't panic, it's not a problem. Uh, we've actually designed the formwork such that the screws that hold it together uh, located on the front and back so we can actually get to them and pull it apart. So you just need uh, a driver or a drill with a Phillips head bit and we'll just take those screws out and pull the formwork apart. So you can see it's pretty easy to get your formwork out even if it does get stuck in there and it's not going to come out as one piece just undo the screws and it'll knock out really easily. Uh, and this is actually what was holding it in. This mortar here on the sides that bled through those joints and sort of pushed itself up against the formwork has just sort of grabbed onto it and just made it a little bit hard to get out. Uh, and now what I want to do is show you uh, sort of cleaning up your brickwork as you go. Now just scrape it off. And then once you've scraped it off, get a scourer. I recommend using a non-scratch uh, non scourer, one of the, uh, the blue non-scratch scourers if you can get your hands on one, um, uh, because they don't tend to leave any residue behind. The green scourers have a tendency of leaving like sort of a green residue behind on the brick. Uh, and then just scrubbing that surface. And you end up with a nice clean joint with a minimum of fuss. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do now for uh, the, the rows we laid, we laid six courses and we're going to go through and just clean up all of those joints now. We want to remove any excess mortar that's on the inside face uh, and just scrub those joints back so they're nice and clean. So we're going to go through and clean up all the joints and when we clean them what we're going to find is that some of the joints might have little holes in them, maybe areas that mortar didn't quite get into. Uh, so once we've gone through and cleaned it all, we'll come back and just backfill those holes uh, with some of our refractory mixture. Uh, we'll put that into any little voids, any, anywhere that's missing the mortar, uh, and then we'll give that all another wipe down. And then we're done with that brickwork. We won't really have to do anything further with it. Okay, um, so some tools that are really handy. If you've got something like this, this is sort of a multi-purpose paint scraper tool. Really, really handy because it's got a point uh, and sort of a, a right angle edge, which makes it really useful for um, getting into sort of little nooks and crannies and, and scraping off mortar. If you don't have something like that, then hey, a chisel is going to do the job just fine. You could even use your trowel. It's just a little bit clumsy for getting into the, the tight spots. Uh, and then, of course, trusty scourer uh, to scrub off the excess. And I recommend having a sponge and an, like an old dry towel that you can wipe, sort of dry the surface off with afterwards, which is going to help get rid of some of that, um, that haze on the surface. 
so when you're cleaning, uh, be aware you can remove the trammel tool from the oven while you're cleaning, particularly the floor. It kind of gets in your way and it's kind of nice to take out. And that's the whole idea of it. It's going to relocate back into the center. Uh, that center pin is in the exact center of the tool. Uh, so it's all set up so it'll just drop back in and it'll be recalibrated and ready to lay your next row of bricks. Um, what I'm using to clean the bricks I mentioned before, the scourer, just using warm water. I'm not using any detergent or crazy acids or anything like that. I am just scrubbing with the scourer. We do get asked from time to time, oh, can I, you know, can I use acid? Uh, because acids are often used for cleaning brickwork in, in housing. It's not something that we recommend. The reason being, you're going to be eating out of this. And I don't really want to put any unnecessary chemicals into this structure if I don't have to. Uh, because the bricks are very porous, so they're going to tend to soak in uh, whatever I scrub them with. So if I scrub them with acid, well, they can absorb some of that. That may not really be an issue at all, but I'm very conservative and I really like to know that um, I'm cooking in a, a nice, sort of clean environment, uh, and, you know, putting out food that's, that's good for me. When you're placing these bricks and they're coming in uh, and sitting over this, this uh, cast uh, section that uh, we did previously, that if I place this brick, I'm noticing when I put it down, it wants to twist inwards. Instead of sitting up, it's twisting over. Uh, and there is a little bit of give in the trammel tool that will allow it to do that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is when I place this brick, I'm going to be quite careful to put it in with enough material underneath it, enough of the refractory underneath it to hold it on the right angle. Uh, and then I'm just going to wait and let that set uh, before I release the tool from it, just so that it doesn't move around on me. At some point, you're going to do your first ring of bricks, your first full ring of bricks, and it's going to go across the top of the entry arch. Uh, now you may find when you get there that you have to grind one of the bricks uh, to actually fit because you, you may find that when you go to put it in, the entry arch causes it to sit a bit high, uh, in which case you would need to grind a little bit off the bottom. In our case here, uh, we've got a bit lucky uh, and it's looking like it's just going to fit perfectly and we're just going to be left with this little gap here between these two bricks and we're going to fill that in. Uh, we might actually use one of the little stagger bricks in there, or maybe hey, we use some more of the refractory mixture. Uh, but one thing to be aware of is just try and make sure that you're keeping that nice continuous ring because it's, it's relatively easy at this point to um, uh, change the alignment of the ring and, and maybe turn it into more of a teardrop shape than a circle. And so it's just a matter of eyeballing it and looking along going, oh yep, that's this one's lining up really nicely with the brick behind it. Great, we can keep going. Okay, now if you do happen to create a teardrop shape, and I did on my first oven, 
we can fix that with the refractory mixture. Uh, and let's say we created a bit of a teardrop here. We can just fill in, um, uh, in instead of putting the, the next row of bricks hard against this row, we could just space them back just a little bit with the refractory mixture uh, just to bring us back into a nice even circle. Okay, uh, you'll find some more detail on that in the written instructions, so check those out. Uh, but yeah, if you do find yourself having to grind down a brick, it's not that hard. Uh, just make sure you are wearing a dust mask when you do so. Something that you'll find as you get to the higher courses uh, is obviously the angle that the bricks are laid on is getting steeper and steeper. And so if I take the trammel tool off, having just laid this brick, it's going to want to slide in uh, under its own weight. Now, something you can do to stop that, there's a, there's a few things you can do. You can be super patient, uh, mix really small batches of your refractory mix uh, and lay a brick and then wait for a few minutes for it to sort of not set, but sort of stick and then move on to the next one. Uh, you can also alternate instead of starting in the middle and then working all the way around. You can do one on that side, one on that side, one on that side, alternate backwards and forwards so that you're not disturbing a freshly laid brick each time you lay a new one. Um, the other thing you can do is just get a prop, uh, so a stick, uh, something just the right length, just to sit in under the brick before you take it out of the trammel tool. Uh, so you just get, in my case, I'm just using crowbar uh, and it just happened to be the right length. Um, usually I would just use a stick or a piece of steel, it doesn't really matter, just something that's gonna be the right length. And I'll just put that in underneath and just, I'm not pushing very hard, I'm just gonna prop that in place so that when I take the trammel tool off, now the this little prop here is going to bear the weight of it and it's not going to move on me okay and then i can go on and lay another one and by the time i've laid that one and i need the prop again i can this this one should have set and so i can take that off and go to the next one um, but basically the key thing here is really take your time don't don't rush these rows because uh, they are quite steep and um, it is a little challenging one of the next things we're going to do is actually move on to using our fiberglass dome form. Uh, however, you can keep using the trammel tool all the way to the very top if you really want. It's just incredibly time consuming uh, to lay them that way and it's much quicker to use our fiberglass formwork as you're going to see. Um, but feel free to go as high as you want with the trammel tool. I usually go uh, to this, this row here, which in case of the D105 is row number eight. Uh, and the reason that I'm happy to change over to the fiberglass form at this point is I can't really see the brickwork. When I look through the doorway, I can only see up to row eight anyway. In order to see any higher, I sort of have to stick my head in through the doorway uh, to, to see that brickwork. Uh, so it's, there's not really a whole lot of point in um, uh, in using the trammel tool past this point. The fiberglass form gives us the exact curve, so it's made to the exact radius of curvature of the particular oven kit that you've bought. Uh, and the only the only downside with using the fiberglass form is that your joints won't be quite as neat as they are when you use the trammel tool. Okay, they should still be quite neat, but because you can't see the inside face of the brickwork uh, as you're laying the bricks, then you tend to get slightly bigger joints uh, when you lay them. So um, feel free to take the trammel tool as high as you want, uh, but for the D105, we're gonna go to row eight and then we'll, we'll call it a day for the trammel.